Hello guys and welcome to my new StarCraft 2 channel. I'm about to cast a game between the Zerg Firekin and the Protoss IMO. This is a game of plat platinum level. And we'll be seeing... Oops, that's a bit fast. We'll be seeing uh, how the Zerg and the Protoss will react to each other's gameplay. I'm casting this game because uh, this matchup is one of my most difficult matchups. Zerg versus Protoss. In the top corner we have the red Zerg Firekin. And in the bottom corner we have the blue Protoss IMO. It'll be interesting to see if the Protoss will be doing a, a FFE or a Forge first expansion or Fudge fast Forge expansion. And what kind of pool timing the Zerg will be doing. This is quite often a giveaway of what kind of aggression we'll be seeing. If the Protoss uh, does a gateway first, he'll be very aggressive usually. And if so, the Zerg should be doing a pool first to avoid uh, being caught by a few zealots without having any links out. We'll be seeing if he'll take a hatch first, which is uncommon versus uh, Protoss these days because a lot of Protoss are doing a gateway first. Let's see what's going down here. We have the Forge first, and it looks like it's going to be a fast next eye after the Forge. The correct response from the Zerg to this would be Hatch, then Hatch, then Pool, or Hatch, Pool. This, this uh, Pool opening isn't bad, it's just a reduction of the Zerg's economy. Unless he's planning on doing a two base build versus the Protoss, which is uh, becoming more and more popular. Uh, going to a two base muter, timing around the 10 minute mark, and then uh, transition into a uh, Ling Ultralisks, or a uh, Ling Bling, or a uh, Ling Roach, or Bane Ling Roach. Personally, I do not like uh, Baning versus, uh, versus Protoss because it's the shield. The shields of the Protoss units will regenerate. So, you need uh, to kill the units uh, with the banings for actually being effective. Uh, versus a Terran, it's not that it's not that important. We see some cheese going down for the for the Protoss here. He'll be cannon rushing the the Nacho of the Zerg, which is uh, common in case the in case the pool is late. However, this was a pool first. Which is the perfect build to counter uh, the the cannon rush. We see here 100, 200, 300, 450 minerals being uh, used here to cancel this hatchery. The hatchery is 300 mineral plus 50 from the drones, so the Protoss will be losing at least 100 minerals here, uh, and that's without doing any cancels. However, we had one cancel here. But this one wasn't cancelled, so the Protoss will be losing uh, money here. I like the way Farkin is doing this, he's using uh, his probes to start doing some initial damage and then sending them back to work. However, he should be remembering to inject with his screen here. He'll be behind on lava now and he can't spend his money because he doesn't have uh, enough lava to spend it on. If we check out the lost... Uh, units lost? Yeah, resources lost. The Protoss has lost 750 minerals already, uh, which has put him far behind. Uh, it looks like uh, the Protoss could have his wall up in time if you put a gateway here. And then uh, add on a pylon perhaps. But we'll see. The correct response here would be uh, for the links to attack, try to get in in case the wall wasn't up. Uh, he should be pulling off now once he sees the wall is complete. Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, a decent move. And here the protest remembers to cancel uh, whatever he was building here. It was probably a pylon. Uh, checking in to see if the building got cancelled after he left, but no, the wall is complete. <coughs> Looking at the count now, the the, the protest is uh, ahead of in drones. He remembered to macro probably. Uh, after his uh, his failed aggression. However, the Zerg will be catching up first. He's grabbing a third. 
which is, uh, in my opinion, a good idea because uh, he's already behind. Uh, the process is already behind, so the aggression uh, won't come anytime soon. And this way, the the Zerg unit, the Zerg player, will have enough time to uh, get up a decent uh, force to uh, to hold off whatever aggression that will be coming. It will probably be some sellers and some stalkers. Would make sense because it's a gateway army, uh, and using tech uh, won't be coming until way, way earlier, uh, way, way later. So we have the third hatchery down. Situation at his uh, natural is uh, is uh, good. He's not utilizing these uh, these gases yet. Uh, he should have waited with the build of it then, if he's not going to utilize it, uh, rather than uh, building them and then having them staying. Uh, this is one worker, and this is one worker, and it's also 25 minerals, so it's 150 minerals spent without being used. Um, he should have had the, the drones mining instead. So, we had a fast layer as well from the from the Zerg user. Uh, he needs to find out uh, what tech route the Protoss is going. But um, there probably won't be any tech uh, yet. Looks like we have some gates going down, which is pretty common. We have the Twilight Council, that could indicate either DT, uh, Charge or Blink. And then we have the Stargate going down. Stargate is a pretty typical opening for Protoss these days. Um, going into Void Race uh, versus Roaches, because Roaches will hit pretty hard. Um, on this, uh, the sentries uh, will block out uh, aggression for a while. Um, so, a good response here from the Zerg could be going into Muta to do some harass. Not much here can shoot up yet, and we only have uh, the cannon here uh, and these two sentries. So, if you'd walk in with the with the mutalisks, kill off the sentries, kill off. The, the cellars here, uh, guarding the entrance, and then do a ling run by. Uh, maybe snipe this uh, pylon and this pylon. Uh, this one won't be powering uh, this gateway, so it's only powering the cybernetics core. And even with like five muters, this phoenix would be uh, history. Or without the the mutalisks, the the phoenix would be useless. <coughs> we have some speed speedlings out from the Zerg, uh, ready to catch any incoming aggression from the perchance uh, four or five gates. Uh, it doesn't look like uh, we have much aggression coming yet though. Uh, we have some proxy pylons going down. The Zerg is at uh, 55 drones. I like that number on three bases at this state of the game. Uh, I'd be uh, working towards a fourth now, uh, or getting some tech up. Looks like we're getting some tech. It's uh, some very late upgrades, uh, actually, from the from the Zerg. Uh, he has zero zero at the moment, doing a lot of links, probably to deny uh, aggression. Um, after this aggression, however, uh, after denying these uh, pylons, the, the Zerg should be uh, shutting down uh, unit protection and doing some upgrades instead. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Process is starting to catch up uh, in the economy now. Some preemptive defense is coming down. Oops, we have two workers here just idling. <coughs> we have a uh, Spine crawls and spore crawls for DTs and drops uh, makes it easier for the Zerg to be aggressive with his uh, with his army. Uh, can micro a bit better if he doesn't have to uh, check back to his base to check for DTs. Uh, once the oh, we actually have a DT shrine, this is going to be interesting. So we have some users packed over here. Uh, not really enough to do a lot, but enough to do harass. Uh, it could force out some uh, some air units, uh, more phoenixes from the 
from the Protoss user, but uh, he doesn't uh, reveal them yet. He's just flying around, checking for pylons. Let's see, will he spot these actually? Yeah. This one, I'm not sure it will be attacked, it will be spotted, but let's see. Let's see, let's see. <coughs> we are seeing uh, in the tab that the process unit is, uh, the process user is, uh, is uh, nearly ahead uh, in, uh, in production. He is uh, only like 25 uh, food behind. Um, he has a couple of DTs, some sentries, a phoenixes. Uh, eight phoenixes do count as this flock of mutalisks though. A murder of, of mutalisks perhaps. I don't know if they're called a murder or a flock. Who cares actually. Um, the interesting part here is uh, the phoenix shut down the muta, but uh, the links, the users is not there to uh, to actually do anything, there are uh, two open paths for the for the links, and to uh, possible kill off any uh, colossi if any is there, and uh, to open up the gateway uh, wall at the at the entrance of the proto space here. However, there is no wall right now. There we go. This one could be very very fastly sniped by the mutalisks, and we have the phoenix packed here. <coughs> this opening is actually very annoying for the Zerg to hold. Um, phoenixes to kill off uh, overlords, overseers, and then uh, attacking with um, attacking with the, the DTs. Uh, the Zerg is not able to s to spot them. Uh, you'll have to fight near your base uh, because of the detection from the spore crawlers. Near the the phoenixes are plus one attack, plus one shield. The mutas are probably zero zero. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting to see what the Zerg is gonna transition into. He should be grabbing a third and a fourth, uh, fourth and a fifth soon uh, to increase his uh, gas income. But he's has scouted no third from the protest yet. But you want to be ahead, and you do not want uh, the basis because of the money income. You want the basis because of the lava production, so you'll be able to to remax faster once you start trading armies. Uh, because you do not want to fight a 200 200 protest army with a 200 200 Zerg army without uh, units to uh, without lava to to reinforce your army. 200-200 uh, Zerg is very, very weak compared to 200 Protoss. This Colossi should be sniped by the Mutalisks we have here, uh, but he walks directly into these uh, Ultralisks. And, uh, well, Colossi isn't the counter to, uh, <laughs> to Ultralisks. We have the Phoenix sniping off the Overlord, uh, the Overseer. So uh, the process aren't actually, uh, the circa aren't actually able to see these DTs. This is a very strong build, uh, but the Zerg forces simply overwhelm the Protoss army. He should be slipping some uh, some uh, circlings in here to uh, kill off the probes and destroy the destroy the income of the Protoss. But yeah. There we go. I would like to have seen uh, the Ultra Risk runs off and save instead. There. Yeah. Aggression shut down. In the meanwhile, while the Protoss was killing off uh, this, saving the leftovers of his base, the game is pretty much lost now. Uh, Protoss has a pretty huge bank though, 
but uh, he also have 15 phoenixes uh, flying around, killing off overseers and the overlords from the from the circ, and he'll be unable to uh, to kill off these uh, due to the fact of a high number of DTs. Seven, it seems like. Actually, there's ten. Oh, there's a few few spotters out here. 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 These. And one in here. So we have some long range mining here. Uh, while the next size is building up, he should be carrying a third wire array. With which I guess it's probably his second because there's nothing left to mine here. Uh, what uh, the Zerg should be doing, he should be either getting uh, lots of Corruptors or uh, Fungal Growth. Fungal Growth would be the easier way to handle this number of Phoenix time or completely skip out on uh, skip out on air units uh, but this amount of uh, Phoenixes will, by lifting, will be lifting up your units and just slowly killing them off as we're seeing here. The Zerg is unable to move out uh, the Phoenix kills off the Corruptors pretty fast and then they shut down uh, the detection of the proto of the Zerg. So now DT have free range and up until the bases. Uh, luckily for the Zerg he has spore crawlers. Well, it's probably not luck, but uh, smartly enough the Zerg has spore crawlers in his mineral lands. Um, but this amount of this amount of phoenixes <coughs> gives uh, the Protoss a pretty uh, pretty big uh, map control. Uh, he's completely uh, he's able to completely deny Zerg moving out of his bases. The uh, only thing he can be doing actually is uh, building up a bank and then do a mass corruptor. <coughs> uh, he certainly has the lava for it. He has 15 lava, and uh, he has. 11 Corruptors in production and he already, already has some Corruptors out on the field uh, being able to find a 16 Corruptors once he's done uh, to count out the 13 With decent macro however uh, the Phoenixes should be able to stay alive but uh, you won't be using the Corruptors to uh, to kill off the phoenixes, you'll be using the corruptor to uh, protect your uh, your overseers. While your ground army kills off the protoss. The pro protoss has his uh, natural base saturated again. His production is uh, about to kick in once again. It'll be at seven gates. It looks like so nine gates uh, and also walling here. So he'll be at about 12 gates. He has no tech yet except for the DT, uh, but he can't afford uh, spending his money. He's uh, very low on uh, minerals. Like the day 9 he said, if you want to deny gas, kill bases. If you want to deny minerals, kill workers. Makes sense, I guess. But by then, by ruining his, uh, his next sign, uh, you'll be hampering his income as well. The Protoss has 1000 gas banked and uh, he's low on minerals, so killing workers would be the right call uh, if this work was to engage this. And units were pretty good at denying workers. Ultralisks. They're huge as Kaiser blades kills off these pretty pretty fast. Looks like the Zerg is moving out. <laughs> He's uh, he has stuck his units to a corruptor uh, to a to an overseer uh, to make sure the units do not run ahead and get killed uh, while the overseer is behind. Going uh, DTs in a CVP is uh, pretty good for the protest because it really slows down the army of of a Zerg. We have some DTs up here killing off uh, the fifth, no, the fourth of the Zerg. Um, yeah. No workers here though. The 
let's see. There's a pretty huge amount of Corruptors. 27 to be XX. Shut down wall. Oh. This isn't good. Uh, <clears throat> Zerg should get out of there. Yeah. He gets one Corruptor. And now he's gonna lose his Overlords, the Overseers. Guess not. We have some more corruptors here. Artless cabin. No greater spire, however. Some idle workers. Oh, greater spire is going down. It's going into ultralisk broodlot. Uh, Ling. It's a very potent force. Um. Depends, of course, on how many corruptors you turn into broodlords because the Phoenix counter broodlords are pretty hard. I'm not actually sure that this was a good idea. This is gonna take a while. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So the Zerg is at one mining base. Uh, he has some idle workers. Doesn't he? Nope, he made. He said more into work, okay. He is uh, just about to get this base up in mining. So his income should be rising again. He's a bit low on uh, minerals, uh, high on gas. Uh, but gas is the important factor at this moment. Of course you do need the minerals, uh, but the gas is the, is the reduced uh, amount of tech. And uh, having low tech at this point uh, isn't too, too good a deal. We have 10 broodlots on the way. I guess I'll be raining down on this uh, broodlot right here. Could be shutting down the space pretty fast. However, Phoenix is coming in to kill the, the corruptors and then uh, and then the broodlots uh, would be uh, effective. We still have the 13 here. We have 3-3 uh, three, three ground upgrades for the Zerg. Yeah, we don't have Cracklin it seems, do we? No. This is a, a decent joke for both uh, players. The Phoenixes should be attacking from this side, however, to pull back into the cannons. And there's the GG from the Protoss. He lost his army, he has very little bank, and, well, building up it, an army to, to actually counter this is uh, it's pretty expensive and he's losing his mining base here this one just got up and running um, was a good time for the Zerg to uh, to engage because if he didn't he'd be behind on the common economy uh, they are even in workers but the process has two working bases the Zerg has one and he hasn't saturated his gases here so I guess the tip for the Zerg would be to uh, to macro better uh, after you get your third, uh, you need to focus on getting a fourth and a fifth uh, while controlling your army. I believe the 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 counter build here from the Zerg was decent. Uh, he went the right way. He stuck on this path. He uh, he took uh, the corrupted path and then uh, went into broodlords. Um, a more skillful player would have taken uh, 
fungal growth and then stayed with the fungal uh, ultra ling probably um, and both would be good uh, this takes the game into tier 3 though uh, and controlling broodlords are a lot easier than controlling uh, infestors however uh, countering the broodlords are easier than countering the, the infestors if uh, the process had better micro he could be uh, microing his phoenixes uh, while taking down the army of the Zerg. So, uh, pretty fun game uh, to watch. Had some interesting uh, pathways. I do like a uh, Sentry uh, DT play. Uh, it's not Sentry, a uh, Phoenix DT play from the from the Protoss because it's so so hard to uh, to play against as a as a Protoss. Um, but it requires good micro of the Phoenixes. Then you just uh, let the DTA move and uh, micro around your army. Oh yeah, and once uh, the process, uh, once the Zerg gets up uh, his big balls of units, you just turn the DTs into Archons, and then you have Solar Archon, which is the counter to uh, to grouped up biological units such as Corruptors and Zerglings. I believe the upgrades were pretty late, pretty late for the for the Zerg. He should have gotten his uh, Adrenal Glands to make cracklings and uh, I believe it was about 12 minutes before we saw the first upgrade from the from the Zerg kicking in uh, doing a ling opening you should get some upgrades fairly early um, some even say getting a plus one plus one at the same time you get speed uh, by doing a double gas at the at the five minute mark the protest opening um, well if he hadn't lost uh, his cannon rush at the natural in the beginning, he'd, uh, he'd be in a better shape of uh, of an opening. He did lose 750 minerals right here, and that set him very far behind. One, nearly 1,000 minerals at the at the four-minute mark of the game is uh, a very big deal. Uh, the Zerg should have punished this, I guess. Uh, but because of the wall, it, uh, it 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 could fail easier. I believe the Zerg picked the right the right way of uh, staying ahead instead of uh, trying to kill his opponent uh, with an attack that could possibly fail due to the sentries being able to block off the wall and uh, just uh, adding more gates from the from the protoss would uh, keep out the links. Uh, he could have sent in his links a bit earlier, but uh, I believe the, the right right choice was to get his search fast um, and a fourth. I should I should add that um, if the protoss when the protoss spots this pool first, he shouldn't be carrying rushing the natural because he's gonna lose that pretty fast uh, unless the circ doesn't react, of course. But you can't expect your opponent not to react. You have to see okay, pool first. Then we can cannon his hatch. We can deny it by putting a pile on, and then uh, using our probe to deny the third, perhaps, uh, or even just uh, using the probe on the natural to uh, harass the the placement of the. Yeah, once the Zerg gets uh, delayed on his natural, he'd probably grab a third, a quick first, and then you know he's gonna go into Roach Hydra, uh, or you can force it by being aggressive with some gateway openings and you haven't actually spent any minerals on it because you just uh, used your probe to uh, to deny the hatchery some even uh, grab two probes uh, to kill off uh, incoming drones and others place a pylon and then cancel it place a new pylon and then cancel it it's a choice however it was a good game and thank you for watching